Take this little machine that you see here. It shows that what Newton called counteraction is actually a complementary action of the initial action. In other words, there is no counteraction. There is a continuation of that basic action which is captured practically from the air, from the surroundings. So, we owe a lot to this author. Look here, Michael Faraday, in the creation of motors, especially traditional motors. Look at his picture. What did Faraday do? Let's see on the chart. He made the Faraday ring. They are two separated halves. By inputting electricity in one part, the other half also captures it automatically, even at a distance. And so then it was mistakenly thought that electricity converted into magnetism, and then magnetism back into electricity. And we show that electricity comes from magnetism. Therefore, the electrical system does not produce magnetism, as is thought with the making of these big generators of today. Now, an extraordinary creature is this person I'm going to show now. Nikola Tesla. And what did he do? Let's see the next picture. The induction motor. These are the motors that industries use, and they are based on electricity, which is taken from hydroelectric power plants, especially here in Brazil. And let's see how they work. Next picture. That coil, spool, that spins, captures electricity from the two poles they call positive pole and negative pole the North Pole and the South Pole. And so it captures the magnetism outside. And so I'd like to show the fundamental mistakes involved. Look at this chart firstly. Energy as deriving from matter. This idea is according to Einstein's formula, as Claudia has just mentioned. Matter is pure energy. But matter does not generate energy, like Einstein said. But rather, matter is already a consequence of energy. This energy extracted from matter, for example, from coal, petroleum, etc., is already a derivative, a very weak energy. And so it is necessary to use huge amounts of it, which pollute the air and the seas. And then what happens? we face an almost unbreathable situation, in addition to the diseases produced. Tesla's induction motor is a motor based on electricity, which is already a pollutant element. And this element creates a very big tension in our environment. Let's see, secondly, a mistake in physics. The body, as formed by matter, instead of formed by condensed energy. And thirdly, all energy is dual. There is no electron without a proton. As I've already mentioned, let's see the observation. Each individual thing is formed by two elements, which afterwards form a synthesis, which in turn is also dual. Now, in the second part of our program, I will show this motor that we call the Kepian scalar motor because it is a motor based on our ideas of analytical trilogy. I'm going to show a video of how Cesar Seuss and Roberto Frascari made this motor. Because look, this is the greatest invention of the century. We'll be right back.
I would like now to play the video of the creating of this scalar energy machine made by Cesar Sous and Roberto Frascari. Just look at this. Well, this is a motor that looks very similarly to the conventional ones, but it is based on the principles set forth in the book The New Physics Derived from the Disinverted Metaphysics by Norberto Cappi. This motor consists of, uh, of the following. It has a coil, a spool, made of regular copper wire and a magnetic rotor made of permanent magnets, a shaft, a switching system, one or two batteries and a rectifying circuit. Here, a uh, rectifier. So what happens here? In a conventional motor, the coil, uh, this copper spool, is fed by the battery. The battery generates a magnetic field and this field interacts with the rotor. Uh, whether magnetic or electromagnetic so as to create motion. This conventional process causes the battery to rapidly lose power because it utilizes only one direction of the energy. In the case of our motor, we capture both components and the scale of the scalar energy as described in Dr. Cappy's book. So it utilizes the energy that comes from the battery and the returning energy that goes to the battery. This causes the motor to run with a higher efficiency, especially because the motor remains cool. It does not heat up and the power increases considerably. This motor provides torque, provides power to the shaft, it does not present heat losses and, in addition, it provides an increase of energy that can be returned to charge a third battery while the motor runs. So, in short, this is a motor of very high efficiency. Now, Roberto will start it. There we go. The motor is working with an optimized consumption of energy, or in other words, it's using very little of the battery. A regular fan like this found on the market consumes about 50 to 60 watts. This device has around 24 volts and a very low current, well below 1 amp, and only 3 watts maximum, as compared to the 60 watts of a conventional fan. As Dr. Cappy shows in the new physics, every external movement derives from an internal movement through the internal vibration. So this motor that we developed based on the new physics demonstrates this because conventional motors utilize the energy of one direction only, which causes the spools to turn and work always in the same direction, in one direction only. In the case of this motor, it acts in the scalar field. As Dr. Kep explains, scalar energy makes matter and causes the movement of the entire universe. This energy always works in two directions, and this motor works in exactly the same way. We give an initial impulse, a start, and then in the return of this energy, it captures this return of the scalar field the scalar energy and this causes the motor to run using almost no energy from the initiator the batteries in this case this motor uses batteries to provide the initial thrust and the motor captures the second component of the energy of the scalar field in this way we can run a fan like this which conventionally consumes from 30 to 60 watts using less than one watt and as you can see it runs like a conventional fan. And so when I connect this battery we are going to feed the system with 24 volts and it will run the fan.